My boyfriend, 23M, screamed at me, 20F, for not wearing a bra under my shirt. We've been together for eight months and this is a really insane situation. I was staying the night at my boyfriend's apartment and I really wanted to walk with him to this nearby shop so that I could buy a horchata and for whatever reason he didn't want to go. He started trying to make excuses like, we're both white so it will look weird, but I just told him that I was just going to run in really quick and all I wanted was for him to walk with me since it was like 11 p.m. He finally agreed but he said he needed to shower and get dressed. Even though we were just going to a small little shop, but I know he really cares about his appearance so I didn't mind. Anyways I typically wear bras but recently this brand of bras that I have is causing rashes and discomfort so I just figured since we were going on like a 5 minute walk that I would just put on a baggy shirt and be fine. We started walking to the place and right at about the time we got there he somehow noticed and said, are you not wearing a F.C. King bra? When I explained that my bra was leaving me with a rash and it's not a big deal he started screaming at me and saying that I'm trying to be a S.L.T. and he knew that I was going to pull some bullshit. He was screaming to the point where some guys outside of the shop were staring. He then turned around and started walking back to his apartment, so I just stood there shocked and I could feel my throat quivering. Eventually I started following him since I didn't want to be left in the middle of the night, and never got my horchata. He went to bed and I slept on his couch, and then when he woke up today he acted like nothing happened. I'm not sure if I should brush his freak out off, or confront him about it. He was probably tired and that's mainly why he acted that way, but he has always been weird about me wearing skinny jeans too so I just hope he won't continue this or get worse. How should I go about this? Don't brush that off, that's such a huge red flag. Downgrade him to X and move on to someone that won't police your body or scream insults at you. First of all, I'm sorry for what he said to you. You didn't deserve that. Second. Please, please do not stay with this trash bag. This sounds like an appetizer for what is to come. It will only get worse, not better. He's waving a big red flag right in your face. Don't turn a blind eye to it. This is how controlling abusive relationships start, trust me. What would you tell your sister or your best friend if her boyfriend screamed at her and verbally abused her for not wearing a bra? Dot. Just, move on. You deserve better. When you're tired do you call him names? Bet you don't. Why excuse him for this terrible behavior? My, F37, mother, F57, is trying to call after 15 years NC. My mother is a bad person. It took me a long time to realize that. But she is, she's just a selfish delusional manipulator, who lives in a carefully constructed reality. Anyone who disagrees with that construction, or points out any logical fallacies or otherwise doesn't play along, gets ejected. I'm not going to go into a long sordid backstory, but among other things, my mother has told me my body was disgusting at 13 and I needed to work out more so I didn't have cellulite and men would want my body. I'm not fat and never have been, I just have a thick butt and it's always had some dimples and my mother made me ashamed of it for decades. Left me alone to be babysat by her unstable sister, the same person who tried to drown her brother in a bathtub, burn my mother at the stake, and drown her with quicksand. I got molested at her house when I was very young and it wrecked my body. I have never been able to enjoy sex. My mother knew about the molestation and so, wouldn't take me to a gynecologist. I didn't see one till I moved out at 18. She pulled me out of school at age 16 to be her free babysitter and wouldn't let me graduate. I moved out and got my GED at 18. When I was 7, a few weeks after my dad had been killed, she told me she had been watching me sleep trying to work up the guts to smother me with a pillow so she could kill herself, without feeling guilty. It's been 30 years and I still have trouble sleeping from the trauma of my only caretaker and source of food or shelter telling me they may murder me if I let my guard down. Rested a loaded gun over top of me in the car with my father. Bench seat. I was in the middle. Fucked my neighbor while my dad was partying. I walked in. I will never forget the smell. I was five or six. Oh she would also have sex with men while I was in the bed. Very traumatic. Once she fucked my stepdad in my bottom bunk while I was on the top, so I had to feel the fucking thrusts and listen to him talk dirty to her until they both finished. Tricked me into moving 3k miles back to her home when I separated from my cheating husband, only to attempt to extort me for money and trick me into selling drugs for her. OBV long story. Serious drugs, that put me in dangerous situations. She never even gave me gas money for risking my life for her. And so much more. 
she's truly done irredeemable things to me that I could never forgive. That being said, I am fucked up about her. I think about her often and have deep parental wounds. I do not know how to get closure for these things, and I know one day she will die and IDK how to deal with that. She's been calling my phone for two days now. She hasn't called in years. IDK what she wants. She hasn't left any messages. Should I accept the call? What could I possibly say to someone who harmed me so much as a child, when they were a full unknowing adult? Could I possibly grow or heal from this encounter or am I setting myself up for a lot of hurt? What can I do to maintain control of my emotions and the situation if I do speak with her? Definitely do not talk to her. There is absolutely nothing that could be a positive outcome for you. Please tell me you are in long-time therapy for your trauma? Block her number, she shouldn't be in your life at all. What in the actual? Dot did I just read? I am significant other significant other significant other sorry you had to endure this life. I am significant other significant other significant other proud of you for digging yourself out of that hole. Now it's time to fill that hole back up so that you can never fall into it again. Do not, under any circumstances, answer that call. Good luck. And truly, so proud of your achievements. It's okay for adult children to go no contact and continue to go no contact with abusive parents. Some people find it cathartic to eventually have a talk with them even to say I forgive but don't forget but you certainly don't have to and yes she very well may just want something. Let it all go to voicemail if it ever gets to that point. Don't answer. Maybe consider blocking her number as a whole. 25M, 22F, my girlfriend is sad all the time because she misses her ex. We have been dating for around 7 months now. You can check my post history for a more in-depth backstory, but basically she still has feelings for her ex, Tom. Now, to my knowledge she hasn't done anything or talked to him in at least two months. Last week someone mentioned him to her at work and she got really sad. When I asked her what was wrong she basically told me that she felt unwanted and that nobody loved her, even though I told her how beautiful she is and how much I love her every day. She says it's more the fact that she doesn't like the idea that someone would forget about her so easily. I hug her and tell her everything's gonna be okay. Fast forward to last night. She starts getting sad again and I tell her to be honest and just tell me what's going on. She says that she still misses and has feelings for her Tom. And how even though she loves me and wants to marry me, she gets sad because she feels unwanted. She told me she wrote up a text to him looking for closure, but apparently decided not to send it because he might not respond. I told her that she can always talk to me about these things and that I would help her through this. I asked if she needed space and she said no, that's the last thing she wants. She wants me to be with her while she works through this. I'm feeling really conflicted. I love this girl, but it's so painful to me that after all the time and love I've given her, she's still sad because of her ex. It just hurts knowing that nothing I do will be enough. I feel like I'm pouring my heart into her but it's just leaking out if that makes sense. I don't want to leave her, but I feel so empty and sad. Is it really worth working through things with her, even though it hurts me? How do I approach this situation without disrespecting her feelings? She says that she still misses and has feelings for her Tom. Look, I get it. You're young. You think you can fix everything. You can't fix this. Leave her. There's no situation where this ends well for you. Wait I am trying to figure out here. So you sitting there and she is telling you I miss this dude who was inside of me some months ago and you have to sit there and give support because for some reason this is some baggage you have to deal with? Why would you put up with this I am wondering. You are a second option here. The one that she will have in her head isn't it. And you talking marriage? Don't do such a mistake plz. If Tom messaged her tomorrow morning they'd be together by end of the day. Have some self-respect. I would have dumped her long time ago. You deserve to be with someone who's not still in love with their ex because I guarantee you she will drop you in a heartbeat if the opportunity to get back with Tom presents itself. My, 40M, wife, 39F, wants my son, 19M, to move out and is threatening to leave. My son moved out for college last year. He completed one semester and then dropped out, stating that academia wasn't for him. He returned home and has been living here the last six months. Currently he is doing odd jobs and applying for something more stable while he figures things out. He helps out around the house and with his siblings. My wife said we need to give him a deadline to move out by. I see that he is making progress, he is saving money for a deposit. He is looking for jobs, and I don't feel a hard deadline is necessary at this time. 
We have been arguing about this the last four months. Saturday, my son's girlfriend spent the night in his room. She left at 6 in the morning yesterday, but my wife and I saw her because we are both early risers. She smiled and waved goodbye to us. It wasn't that big a deal. My wife was pissed and confronted my son. She said he can't have, girls, she's 20, over at the house. He said okay, and that was the end of it. She said she doesn't trust him because he didn't argue the point. She wants him to leave and is threatening to go stay at a hotel with the kids if I don't give a hard deadline. Is there an option I'm not seeing here? I'm not kicking my kid out. I don't approve of many, most, of his recent decisions, but he has not been disrespectful to me or my wife or inappropriate around his siblings. He isn't keeping any drugs in the house. The only alcohol he has brought into the house is beer, which we also have for our own personal use. He buys food for himself. He cooks. He cleans. My wife said she can't live like this. How do I make this easier for her? What's a compromise here? Too long did not read. My wife wants my 19 yo out of the house, and she says if he doesn't leave, she will. Let's be clear. I will apply the exact same limits to the younger children. I will not allow you to make any excuses about how, this is different. Just kidding. Leave. We have been arguing about this the last four months. What do these arguments entail exactly? I'd be curious to hear some of the points you've tried making to your wife in defense of letting your son stay at home, which is definitely the right move, by the way. I have some ideas but I mean, sheesh. After arguing for four months I can imagine you've covered a lot of ground already. I wonder how willing she is to actually see your side. Your wife set your son up with a no-win scenario. He can't bring a girl home to stay over, and when he agrees he won't, she doesn't believe him. Since when is, yes I agree to that rule, not good enough. What does she want him to say? What other response could there be? Also, ideologically, I find such rules pointless, controlling and unnecessary. Your wife is being unreasonable especially in this economy. You need to have two conversations with your son one. What are his goals? Don't give advice just listen, and two, ensure that he's using condoms, advice given and actually buying him condoms. If your son doesn't think academia is for him, he should try trade school. Great pay and you can work for yourself. For him, it might be great. 